to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you could join us today. In this episode, Pastor Jeremy is teaching on how to win the fight of faith. We believe this message is going to strengthen, encourage you, and can change your life forever. Let's head in there right now. God. I hope those of you that went were sure glad that you were there. I believe any investment you make into your marriage, especially as a Christian, will bear fruit. Amen. You know, some people want a marriage, you know, heaven on earth, and they don't ever sow any good into their marriage. All they do is complain. No wonder it's so hard. See, that's a different area than, than finances, but people struggle because of how they talk and how they act. You might as well just lighten up and say, I'm a believer of the word, and I'm a doer of the word, and do what the word says. Husbands, lead the way, and then the wives, you do the, what the word says to you. I mean, the Bible instructions for living right here. Praise God. Well, our girls traveled to Longview, made it back today, flew back, and they lost. And I was sad about that, but I'm sure proud of them in this first year in our TAPS League we're in, getting to the second round of the playoffs. Job well done. Whitney and Audrey coaching them, praise God. And our boys also lost by two points last night to a highly rated team. And uh, we should have won. We should have won. And I was sad for the seniors, but I'm excited for what the Lord is doing here at Accelerate Christian School. Keep every staff member in prayer because this is the gospel in action happening Monday through Friday right here in this building that the Lord's given us. Amen. I, I'm just this top. I drive by and I see all these huge buildings, and I think that's wonderful for every church to have their own building. Don't take that for granted, right? I think that's wonderful. But when I see them just sitting there empty for days on end, I think, well, I know the Lord's up to something because we're growing and we're going to need more space very, very soon. And you look around and you say, well, there's more space in here. All I know, but there were a few snowflakes out there falling tonight. So in the snowflake generation, people have to stay home. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I was not dissing all of you streaming. I, I didn't mean it that way. Did not mean it that way. Praise God. We got to turn our attention to the word before I'm out of time. Father, thank you for your word. I thank you that it's alive and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, I thank you there's a hunger in the house for you. Lord, I thank you that you would speak and use me as a messenger dispatched from heaven. And you give everybody under the sound of my voice, whether by radio, by stream, television, later, right here live in person, ears to hear your spirit. I think your revelation knowledge will flow in this house. I think I'm not moved by people or their looks, good or bad, but I have an unction from the Holy Spirit tonight. So I'll speak exactly what you want. This is yours, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I feel like I just started the series, but this is already part four of how to win the fight of faith. And we've covered quite a bit of ground, actually, already. And there was a service, I think it was Sunday, where I had several scriptures that are pretty familiar to a lot of Christians, but you need to stay familiar with those. In other words, you might want to go back and get those, jot them down if you didn't get them Sunday, and get to know those like you know your own name. Yeah, that way you know how to win the fight of faith. See, first off, you have to know that victory is promised to you. And that's what we looked at Sunday. If you don't know it's promised to you, then this series is a waste of your time. Sadly, a lot of Christians have lived their whole life in defeat. And it's in different areas sometimes in life. And I'm not saying they're going to hell because of it. But in some areas, like with your children, if you don't get this right and win the fight of faith when it comes to your children, you might set them up to go to hell. I didn't mean to talk about you just like that so quick, but... You know, to win the fight of faith is going to take, on your end, showing up and doing what God said to do. I, I'm, I'll show you. All this is Bible, and again, I'm ahead of myself, but understand this. God's will is that his children win. That's God's will. So if you have an area of your life, I've already mentioned we talked about money tonight already. I talked, I mentioned pornography earlier, so if it's lust. And by the way, they're not all lust is sexual in nature. Some of it's for things. We still live in America where there's a lot of people caught up in lust, and it may not be sexual. It may be for things. Now you got to kill that like you have to kill the other lust. It doesn't have the same stigma with it, but you got to kill it because it's a work of the flesh. 
So that's really hitting the nail on the head. Many Christians settle to live a life where the works of the flesh just do, you know, your flesh jerks you around to do whatever it wants to do, whenever it wants to do it, and that's how people live. So actually winning in the fight of faith is like foreign talk to them, but you've got to have this as a staple. God's will is that his children win. Well, many Christians talk about winning, but most aren't willing to do what is required to win, if they even know what to do to win, which is what we're talking about in this series. Again, it's over the works of the flesh I'm talking about, over sin, over sickness, over unforgiveness, and I could go on and on and on with all kinds of things, but just know this. You are called an overcomer. Actually, we looked at it Sunday, more than an overcomer. Amen? So you're supposed to overcome. But in the term overcomer lets you know there's some things you're going to have to face. Now, as long as the enemy has access to your mind, your thought life, and there's no hindrance to that. In other words, unhindered, he can just throw any thought into your mind. And you're just kind of clueless whether it's God, whether it's Satan, whether it's just you. By the way, there's no just you thoughts. Some people don't believe that. But the enemy, he throws fiery darts at you in thought form. But God also has his thoughts. Remember Isaiah 55, he said, your thoughts aren't my thoughts. That's not an excuse to stay that way. <laughs> Some people have said, well, his thoughts and his ways are far above our ways. He just we basically said, we don't understand. God works in mysterious ways. Well, that's not what that scripture is written for. You're supposed to be able to come up and start thinking like God thinks instead of continuing to have stinking thinking. <laughs> as long as the enemy has access to your mind, to your thought life, unhindered, you're going to struggle to walk in what Jesus already purchased when he shed his blood on that cross. Many times the fight of faith is won or lost in the arena of the mind. Which is why Romans chapter 12 is such a valuable verse. Say, thank God for the worm. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. New King James, I have it on the screen. I move quick here if this is your first time. So I do put it on the screen. Jot this down if you're taking notes. All right, how many are hungry for the word tonight? All right, let's, let's look at this. Yeah, you say, well, this one's familiar. I know, but all of my shirts Sunday are familiar. And by the way, if you spend enough time in the word, all of it's familiar. But that don't mean you stay away from it. You don't stay away from it. you got to continue, even in the fundamentals of this. This is a fundamental we're looking at tonight, Romans 12, 1. I beseech you. That's really a stronger word in the Greek than what it shows up there in English. We see beseech. Most people don't use that nowadays. But this is like I urge or I charge you, therefore brethren. Now, wait a minute. Anytime you see brethren or beloved in the Scripture, who is it written to? Just wave, say me. See, anytime you see brethren, if you're a Christian, you see brethren or beloved, you know this is written directly to me. You've got to understand how to rightly divide the Word of God. So when Paul's inspired by the Holy Spirit to write the Roman Christians there in Rome, and he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, he's talking to the Christians. This is after the cross, after the resurrection, after Jesus was raptured, after the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, right? It's after all of that. So rightly dividing this, this applies to you and I just like it does to the Roman Christians. He says, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Wow. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. See, this isn't getting into the real deep things of the kingdom. This isn't something you're going to get a huge reward for in heaven. This is reasonable service. This is fundamental to your Christian walk. Just a fundamental. What? That you present your body. You can't present your body if you're not there. You got that? Verse 2 of Romans 12. And do not. So this is connected to verse 1. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have LifeLinks. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. 
we would love for you to join us for LifeLinks. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. It's a sacrifice to get yourself ready and to show up at church. Maybe not one time, but let's say here you are, radical as you are, coming on a Wednesday night to a remnant church. We have church again on Sunday. Oh, my. The only day off for some people. You have church on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Now, most people don't think it's outrageous. Some do in our culture, but we have church every Sunday and Wednesday. And we have a lot of other things you can plug into, such as prayer tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. if you want to come. That's just your choice. You don't have to. No pressure. But if you want to press into the things of God, it's available, right? But, see, to do that is a living sacrifice. you got to show up and you got to breathe. That's a living sacrifice. Oh, there's been a lot of martyrs that died and their breath was taken and snatched right out of their body by people that were angry at Christ that was in them. But God's looking for some living sacrifices. People that will say, you know, I'm there. Wherever you tell me to go, I'm there. I'm a living sacrifice. So don't miss that. This is reasonable service for a soldier in the army of God. Is that you? Do I need to revert back to children's church again? I'm in the Lord. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I like that. See, these things aren't just songs that are neat that we sing to children. These are marks upon them for life. They're supposed to be to mark their mind. Wait a minute. You're not here to do your own thing. You're here to be a soldier in the army of God. That's why you exist. And your reasonable service as a soldier in the army of God is that you present your body a living sacrifice. You've got to be there. Now, if you're going to have a close relationship with your spouse and your spouse is worth a wooden nickel, they're going to make sure you're there with them, not always on your phone. I can tell you right now, I've been married 21 years, and still tonight, if my wife says, hey, I want to talk to you for a minute, I'm like, okay, hang on just a minute. I have to return this email. I have to reply to this text. I have to. It's not going to take too much of that to she'll be like, really? I need you here with me. You've been doing that all day long. A pastor's life, a lot of it is just replying to people. You may not know that, but that's what I pray for people, of course. But that's, I reply to a lot of questions, a lot of different things going on. That's what I do. It's what I do. You're going to run any organization, you're going to have to communicate to the people that are running the organization for you. So communication is a big part of it. But there is a time in my life where it needs to be me and my wife because she's my covenant partner and I don't need to be. Yeah, I'm listening, babe. Yeah. That ain't going to cut it. And for those of you that don't know, haven't tried that yet, don't do that. But the rest of you that have, you should be like, that's right, Pastor. I know I've been there before. <laughs> hey, if you'll give God your attention, he'll speak to you, even here tonight. Amen. Second thing I want you to look at that's a powerful revelation in these two scriptures right here in Romans 12 is that we can't be fashioned after the world. Instead, we've got to be transformed. We've got to be changed by renewing our mind. And we can't expect someone else to renew our mind. Now, I brought up my spouse as much as I love Aaron. She can't renew my mind for me. Now, she has, when I've letting things slip in my mind, in the sense of letting unrenewed things stay here, said a renewed thing that made me mad. Or vice versa. Maybe I said a renewed thought when she was thinking unrenewed, and it made her mad. But I cannot renew Aaron's mind for her. She cannot renew my mind. My parents raising me in a Christian home and in Christian school and in church every time the doors were open. They can't renew my mind for me. And when I was a child, they had a lot more authority to help me with that and to attack uh, when I had stupid thinking, unrenewed thinking. This is one and the same, by the way. But here, here's the point. Here's the point. we got to renew our mind, and this is done on a thought-by-thought -thought basis. It's a thought-by-thought -thought basis that we renew our minds. So you need to ask yourself this. So don't answer out loud right now. This is a question to ask yourself uh, after church. And unless you're not thinking about the Word right now, right now you might need to ask yourself this. But every day of the week, ask yourself, is this way I'm thinking, is it renewed or is it unrenewed? 
Again, I know this doesn't seem real spiritual, but this is fundamental to the Christian life. Now, speaking of fundamentals, I mentioned the other day that I heard Pastor John George, who was here the last Sunday of January, preaching. Y'all remember, that was, a good, that was good, wasn't it? Well, I heard him. He was able to speak at the Holy Spirit Conference in California on Friday morning, and he's made this statement. He said, quote, I know the team that will win the Super Bowl. That caught my attention. I was like, oh, inside information here. He said, it's the team that will execute the fundamentals of blocking and tackling the best. Y'all remember me telling you that? Well, since then, we've had the Super Bowl. Now, I know a lot of you were at the Sweetheart Banquet, but after it was over, I turned it on my phone and watched it because it was an exciting game at the end. It was a close game. Coach Andy Reid was asked just moments after his Kansas City Chiefs beat the uh, juggernaut Philadelphia Eagle team, that was stacked, who, by the way, had a great offensive line. He was asked, I went and looked it up, because I said, I'm going to get the quote exactly right, because I heard it live, but I wanted to tell you what he said. Listen, because Pastor John George knew what he was talking about. This is what hit me. So I know this may not be your thing, but listen, I have a point to this. So all the ticker tape's falling everywhere. I mean, you can't even see through it. It's just a sea of red. All the players are hugging each other. And a guy named Tom Renault. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Now, it's funny. Patrick Mahomes, a good quarterback, won the MVP. Okay? He won the MVP. He's great on the field. Well, imagine Patrick Mahomes trying to win the MVP without an offensive line blocking for him. The MVP couldn't do his MVP stuff with five defenders tackling him as soon as he says, what? Walks back, smacked, all over time. Right? So they interviewed him. And he said, I want you to listen to this, quote, the biggest thing in the game, Super Bowl game, that they just won, was the offensive line. He said this, quote, they are the reason we won the game. See, you may not know this. I'm just going to give you this real quick. The Eagles had 78 sacks on the season. That's, that's in the postseason combined. That's more than any other team by far. They had a fierce pass rush, and Kansas City's offensive line gave up zero sacks, not one. So the difference in winning or losing the Super Bowl was found in the fundamentals of blocking that they'd been doing since July. Day after day, getting down, uh, just pushing. <laughs> Big old brute beast, right? Is that spectacular? No. Don't tell me, is that spectacular? No. It's not at all. It's just, bleh. I mean, have you ever heard like the sounds of them hitting those, those pads? It sounds about like that. Sure, they could toss this from here to that door without even trying. But they're just blocking. They're just, that's all they do. And they don't get the MVP. They don't win because we all look at the guys of the skilled positions, and those guys say, quote, the only reason we won is because of that offensive line blocking. Seriously? So if that's how you win the Super Bowl, we just came out of, and the difference said by the coach and the MVP quarterback was the offensive line, then I'm here to tell you the difference in you and I winning or losing the fight of faith is literally in the fundamentals of renewing your mind. It's about as spectacular as blocking. It gets overlooked by almost everyone. Except the Christians that are winning. The Christians that are winning are like, hold on, you're on to something here. You're going to have to renew your mind. Let me give you a couple of examples before we part ways tonight. There are a lot of Christians that think they can never overcome sin. I guess they think we're all victims. But since we're in Romans, go back to Romans chapter 5, and let me show you a scripture that's just 
popping off on the inside of my spirit, man. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Say it again. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. It says here in Romans 5, 17, for if by the one man's offense, that's Adam, death reigned through the one. Much more, everybody say much more. Those that receive abundance of grace. Now, pause for one second. You've got to understand grace is not this intangible coverall that people make it sound like. Like they can't wrap their mind around grace. God's so gracious. He's so gracious. Grace is empowerment. It literally means in the Greek, every single word grace but one in the, in the New Testament means this. Divine influence on your heart and its reflection in your life. That's what it means. You see, people have twisted that to mean something it doesn't mean. But you've got to receive an abundance of divine influence on your heart where it's reflected in your life. In other words, you live different than you used to. See, how people make it, it's just the opposite of what people want to make it sound like. Why? Because they have stinking thinking. And they've been listening to preachers that have stinking thinking. All right, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. I underlined this. Oh, please look at this in Romans 5, 17. Look it up. Make sure it's actually in there. It says, they shall reign in King James. New King James says, you will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Now write this down if you're taking notes. Will reign is a one Greek word that means to rule as a king. <laughs> now maybe you understand Jesus' name, king of kings. He's the king. We're little kings. He's our king. You got that? And the king of kings shows us how we are to live and rule. Now, you're going to go do a study on this, but no matter what, you should know this. It's kind of like basic information to every human being. A, a king that rules over his kingdom is no victim in that kingdom. He's the king. He's the top. I don't want to say dog, but, I mean, he's the big dog, right? He's, I did say it anyway. He is the one that's in charge. You don't ever think of one of those kings. When I think of those kings, I think of, you know, a Middle Eastern country or whatever, and they show one of those kings. They show that palace. I don't think, oh, what a poor fella he is. Do you? I don't think, oh, poor fella. He's barely making it. No, he's the king. So then why do we as Christians have this scripture sitting up like a daisy right here in the Bible where it says you're supposed to reign in life, rule as a king, and yet we, well, I just can't help but sin every day in thought, word, and deed. What a lie. Kings don't sit here and go, well, I'm struggling. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You are the king. I've seen nations that are poor, but you see the king of that nation, he ain't poor. And this ain't about just money. Are you hearing me? In the very next chapter of Romans, it says that just like Jesus, the king of kings, conquered death in his resurrection, therefore death no longer has dominion over him. In Romans 6, 11, it says, likewise, so just like Jesus, he conquered death, he rose again. Well, just like that, you, everybody say, that's me. That's me. Reckon, that means count yourself to be dead Indeed to what? You're dead to it. If you're dead to it, you're still not doing it. You're, you're dead to it. So next time you're tempted to get into sin, you say, no, I'm dead to you, sin. Say that out loud. You're releasing the power of God when you say that. You say, well, I just can't help it. I got needs. See, that shows where your faith is set. On what? No Bible. So it's really not faith. It's actual fear being manifest. If it's not founded in the Word, it's fear. If it's in the Word, it's faith being released. Well, I just don't see how I can conquer it. I've been struggling with this for 30 years. <laughs> well, it's, it, God didn't wait on you to you know, see it to make it true. Now, for you, you're going to have to see it for it to be true for you. But the truth is already out there. You can be free from sin. You're supposed to count yourself dead to sin. Say this with me. I'm dead to sin. See, instead of repeating that mantra and that cliche, well, we say in every day in word, thought, and deed, shut that up right now and say, I am dead to sin. <laughs> That's the power of God. And I'm alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
Now look at verse 12. It's like he doubles down the Holy Spirit does through Paul right here. He says, therefore, do not let sin reign. There is nothing in that that, sing, that screams victim. Don't let sin reign. In other words, there's a choice here. There's a choice. Sin is always self-will. Holiness is always what God wills. Therefore, Romans 6.12 says, do not let sin reign. Now look how specific this is. In your mortal body. You see, there's coming a day where those that are alive and remain in Christ will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and will forever be with the Lord. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you see Paul tell the church at Corinth, he said, this is a mystery, this is a secret. Not everyone's going to die. But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, this mortal body will put on what? Immortality. So let me ask you, do you think we'll be sinning in heaven? In your immortal body? No. But notice how specific the Holy Spirit is. Right here, right now. Your mortal body. You could die. Now God has said he's promised you a long life, so that's what you need to know. But the point is, uh, if this flesh suit is ripped, I, I'm still alive. My spirit is, but I lay this life down, right? That's what ends up happening. It's a mortal body. I don't have immort an immortal body right now. Though there are people trying to chase that. A lot of this transhumanism stuff that's going on that you may not be aware of, but man, I'm telling you, it is breathing down our neck. They're chasing immortality. They're not going to be able to find it with AI. I'm just going to let you know. And see, look, hey, hold up. We've already been conditioned like 20 years ago with Hollywood movies that came out. Seriously. AI used to mean a movie that was out. Now, they talk about it just openly. I'm talking big money guys that are running the world or trying to. Are literally saying, if you can, if you can blend a human with a computer... You pretty much own the future. That's what they're talking. They're coming right out and saying it right in the open. This is not hidden, what I'm telling you. This is literally, it's viral, been sent to a lot of people. A lot of people have seen it. If you haven't, let me be the one to tell you about it. That's what's happening. Well, unfortunately, we do have to stop right there. We are out of time today. However, if you would like to hear more from this series on how to win the fight of faith, you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find this message in its entirety, plus so many more that you can listen to throughout your week. But if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Or you can write us, email us. We would love to hear from you. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.